Welcome to Advance TV. Now, in studio today, I have Sam Kent. He's here to break down everything about computer programming, his journey and all that stuff. Thank you and take your time. Now, Sam Kent, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Great to be here. Now, to my very first question to you, when did you become involved in uh, computer programming? Uh, yeah, so uh, it was back in 2014, I believe. I, I think I was 16 years old and uh, actually did not take computer studies, but I had a friend who did. So, you know, we would go to the library and look at these books. Uh, we were both interested in, in computers and you look at these books and then later on you will sneak me into the com computer lab and we'll try to build these kind of basic programs with basic programming languages like Pascal and Visual Basics. Yeah, so that was, I think, the start for me. How can you describe your journey as a first-year computer programmer? So I got involved with programming in 2014 when I was 16 years old, but it was not until 2016, you know, when I really became serious with it. That was after I finished my high school. Uh, uh, that is when I kind of started, you know, reading this uh, other computer languages like C and C++ and become, I became more serious with it. Uh, that first year was kind of pretty rough. Um, at the moment I did not own a computer and it was kind of tough because, you know, I would take my time to study these, these languages but there was no way to implement them. Uh, but later on I got the chance to work at some cyber cafe and got access to these computer systems. And, that is how I started running uh, these programs that I will write. Uh, started running them on computers and, you know, it became kind of fun and, yeah, it just picked on from there. Uh -huh. What qualities does a computer programmer possess or which kind of qualities do you think he or she should possess? I think one of the most important qualities a programmer should, should possess is, you know, the ability to want to learn more uh, and the ability to you know want to build stuff i feel that is that is those are qualities that you know if you have then you're probably you know heading towards becoming a very good computer programmer so i think the ability to want to learn things and uh, the ability to you know wanting to build stuff you know wanting to build stuff yeah i think i think i think that's it what was your biggest computer programming project that you've done so far? So most of the programs I write, you know, are geared towards, you know, kind of ideas I have and things I want to build. But I've definitely worked on some bigger projects. Uh, uh, last year I was contracted by some company to write them some script that was able to scan the network and, and make the, you know, uh, network admins work easier by scanning potentially malicious uh, packets that could have been injected into the network. Uh, I worked on that project for about, uh, I don't know, around two months. Yeah, around two months. So it was, it, was, it was one bigger project. And I'm also working on one currently, uh, though uh, the details are still under wrap. I might not be able to share it, but it's, yeah, it's a big project. How did you get? How, how did you get in touch with the people who who gave you that project? The company that contracted me uh, had posted this this gig. Uh, there's a site called Upwork for freelancers, and I happened to find it. And yeah, that is how I I found it uh, through Upwork.com. How would you describe your computer programming? Yeah, so that's definitely a very interesting uh, question. Uh, computer programming. You know, uh, to me, I will describe it as something I really enjoy doing, uh, something that I've, I've really grown, uh, you know, to, to like uh, and to love. And it's kind of become part of my life, you know, something I really enjoy. And, and the reason why it's so interesting is it's unlimited, you know. Any idea that you have, so long as, you know, you have an idea, you can implement it in, in code and build a program that you know, is, is geared towards maybe fulfilling 
what you had in mind. It sounds crazy, but at times I'll just be sitting down and I'll think of, oh, why can't I build something that does this, you know? And there'll be projects that are just kind of geared towards, you know, making my everyday life a little bit simpler. And I will just, you know, think about these projects and sit down and, and do them. Not necessarily to sell them, but, you know, just to, to, to sit down and write them and see them run. It's amazing. Actually, there's a time I wrote a program to help me read my school notes. It was a pretty fun project. How did you come up with your brand? So one of the fields in computing that I'm really, you know, drawn towards is um, computer security, you know. Uh, it really interests me how the computer works and, you know, all this complex information and how you can, you know, try and, and manipulate the computer to do what you want it to do. And that was actually one of the uh, major reasons why I really dived into computer programming because essentially if you know the language, if you know uh, the language to use to instruct the computer to do whatever you want it to do, then you can manipulate it to do, you know, probably anything. So uh, that is why I started the name uh, Crafty Shell Code. The shell code is just, you know, uh, some piece of code uh, that can be injected, you know, and can be used as, a, as an exploit to exploit some vulnerable program. And in that regards, I also have a, a YouTube channel called Crafty Shell Code where I, I post computer videos, videos to do with, you know, security and, you know, these tools and, and yeah, and, and all, the, all those kind of stuff. You are, your programs are done with a fine sense of humor. Do you think that is useful to stand out as a professional? Uh, the reason for that is that, you know, I actually realized that when I posted, you know, uh, videos dealing with um, very technical things, then people wouldn't watch. So I started, you know, trying to cooperate humor into the videos just to make them bearable uh, for the average viewer to at least keep on. What changes do you see in Kenya since uh, 1970s up to now in line with computer programming? Yeah, between 1970 and right now, um, there are a couple of technological advancements that have taken place, not only in Kenya, but all around the world. You know, computers have become so much faster and have been able to kind of be able and are able to kind of, you know, hold so much data. And that has definitely, you know, improved and pushed forward uh, the innovation. As far as Kenya is concerned, I believe, you know, also in the education sector, uh, we have had more courses, computer courses being introduced to our schools uh, that are geared towards, you know, um, computer programming and just computers in general. Uh, but still, I think there are some improvements that can still be done uh, because I believe that our, our curriculum um, uh, in Kenya does not actually, you know, give these students what they really need in the field. It, yeah, so I think the curriculum could be better suited to help them, you know, advance as the technology advances. What makes a, a good computer programming or a computer program according to you? According to me, um, I think it's, it goes back to the two qualities I mentioned uh, before. Being able to, you know, that ability to want to build stuff is very key because you have to come up with an idea. Okay, I have this idea and then now how do I implement it in code? And then, you know, the ability to learn because uh, Technology is something that changes quite fast and you have to keep up, keep up with it. You have to kind of, you know, learn and learn and learn and learn and continue to learn. And uh, yeah, I think, I think those are enough. Just those two. What is the purpose of computer programming to you? Uh, computer programming, especially to me in my life, uh, it has been able to kind of fill this um, very important space in my life uh, to the point where I actually don't actually wouldn't feel so good if I were unable to to program if I were any, unable to write any code for very long period of time I would probably feel kind of weird so I think it's 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 a very important uh, sector in my life uh, it's very purposeful in my life and yeah
I think, yeah. Which computer programmer inspires you? So as I had mentioned earlier on, I am actually very interested in, you know, things to do with computer security, uh, vulnerabilities, you know, exploits, you know, things to do with, you know, breaking into systems, yeah. And uh, one security researcher that really inspires me in that regard is, is called Marcus Hutchkins. He was the one that was able to find the kill switch for the WannaCry uh, ransomware back in 2017. Yeah, he also has a, runs a very, you know, um, interesting blog, uh, maloyatech.com. You can check him out. Yeah. What technical advancement are you looking forward to? Very interesting question. Very interesting question. Actually, there are, there are a couple of things I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about uh, in terms of what the future holds. And uh, one that really stands out is, you know, quantum computing. I'm especially interested in to see how, you know, uh, the development of quantum computing is going to affect cryptography. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, um, we have reached a point where we kind of have some, you know, standard cryptography uh, protocols like AES that are, you know, kind of unbreakable by today's standard. But with the advent of quantum computing, you know, they might all, you know, just be broken because quantum computing will be such a beast and might be able to just break every, 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 every encryption, all the standard encryptions that we currently have today. So what is quantum computing in simple terms so that my audience might not be wondering what is cryptography, quantum computing, they don't understand. So, okay, so a quantum, yeah, quantum computing. So the way normal computers work is, you know, at the very basic, level at the very lowest level any instruction that you give to a computer will be broken down into either zero or a one and this will determine how you know how the logic gates of the computer works uh, if presented with either one or, or a zero it will either shut or open and that will you know make the computer to respond to various instructions in dif different way but with quantum computing you know any instruction that you give the computer will be broken down into three things either zero or a one or a zero and one both of them and this will present you know uh, very interesting opportunities because that will mean the computer will be able to process instructions more faster and they will also be able to do things that our normal computers cannot do our very last question what do you think the future of computer programming will look like so the future of computer programming is actually very bright, seeing as, you know, the whole world is adopting the use of computer in, 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 in various fields, you know. Talk about medicine, talk about education, talk about transport. Every other field that, you know, uh, human beings rely, rely upon, you know, are, are employing the use of a computer. And that makes, you know, computer programming something to look forward to in the future. Uh, also, I have to mention that the, the future at times kind of looks, you know, unclear just because, you know, of the development of machine learning and, 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 and artificial intelligence where, you know, uh, programmers are currently uh, working on, on, on programs that can be able to, you know, program themselves, can be able to instruct themselves without the supervision of human beings. So the future in that regards may, may or may not be clear depending on how you look at it but yeah the development of of, of intelligible uh, programs is on and that may be bad or good news depending on how you look at it thank you very much Sam Kent for making time for me and I hope to host you again maybe in future if my my audience need you again I'll bring you back and to my audience thank you very much that was our time Till next week, thank you.